There you go. Joining us right now is Alan Smith with, you thought I was going to say Bishop Sheen today, but no, it's Alan Smith from HolyFaceMiracle.com. That's HolyFaceMiracle.com, not Bishop Sheen today. Good morning to you, Alan. Good morning, Adrian. It is great to be here. It's uh, nice to have uh, two monikers that I can uh, present to people, uh, one as a Fulton Sheen expert and the other as an expert on the devotion to the holy face of Jesus. And uh, people would ask me, why the two? Well, the two are connected uh, because Archbishop Sheen spoke about the holy face and he spoke about St. Therese, the little flower, uh, many times. And so it's a natural connection. And of course, Fulton Sheen wrote a great deal against communism, war, uh, evil men, like all of this. So uh, the two are inseparable, I think, Bishop Sheen and the Holy Face. And uh, I tell you, there's many miracles happening uh, every day uh, by people joining the great army of the Arch Confraternity of the Holy Face and praying the devotions of the of the holy face and so lots of miracles you know alan it's really interesting because i was we're talking about elites right and nobility and bishops are natural nobility they're natural elites in fact they're known as princes of the church and fulton sheen understood that in a very clear way we've talked in the past about the dignity of the priesthood and his book on that and you see him whenever he presents himself in public he doesn't wear the clerical suit. No, he wears the Episcopal regalia, the, the bishop regalia. He wears the hat, the cape, the pectoral cross, the cassock, all of it. He wears it all to show who he is because he lends authority to the words he says. And then he proclaims that. And I thought that's very interesting to think about when we talk about Fulton Sheen. And speaking of Fulton Sheen and the Holy Face, and there is a quote here from Way of the Cross for Communist, a Good Friday address from Fulton Sheen, he says here, quote, Veronica wipes the face of Jesus. Human beings were not all meant to carry either a sickle or a hammer. Some are meant to carry towels, to wipe away the beads on feverish brows, to stroke the arching head, and to touch the worn face as with healing wings. Such was the mission of Veronica, who dared brave a violent mob to refresh the Savior and in reward to receive on her towel the imprint of the face that saved the world. Alan, what are your thoughts on Fulton Sheen's comments about St. Veronica? Yeah, uh, he is inviting us to be the next generation of Veronicas. Uh, he presents this story of uh, a young woman um, just you know, breaking through the, the mob to uh, take her veil off and to console our blessed Lord. And so she gives us that holy example. And uh, Fulton Sheen is saying, I want you to be the next Veronica. I want you to each day compassion our Lord. Um, and I think it's just a beautiful invitation. Um, how many of us think, yeah, I want to compassion our Lord. I want to make some reparation for not only my sins, but the sins of the world. And I think as you start to make reparation, as you start to uh, put your eyes upon uh, the face of our Lord in, of course, that beautiful representation of the veil of Veronica, your heart starts to change. It really does. But it was that invitation that Fulton Sheen gave us back in 1948 to become a new generation of Veronicas to compassion our Lord. Mm, amen. Amen. And, you know, it's interesting that he kind of connects this to the communist. Why is it that he connects this here to the hammer and sickle? Well, when you start to study the uh, devotion to the holy face and the history of its um, presentation to the world, it's a representation. The devotion to the holy face has, uh, you know, been with the church since the very beginning. Uh, the Vatican has uh, reverenced the Veil of Veronica for many years, processed it through the streets. But yet in the 1840s, the 1850s, uh, this is where communism was, uh, I like to say, being birthed and rising up. And there was revolutionary men, um, you know, in uh, all over Europe. Uh, again, the Vatican was seized. Uh, the Pope was displaced, uh, you know, in 1849. Uh, the Pope was not even 
there because the revolutionary men had taken over. Uh, there was war in the streets. And so this uprising needed to be combated with a spiritual battle. And that, of course, is the holy face and uh, I guess making reparation against these blasphemies, the profanation of holy days of like Sunday and holy days of obligation. Uh, that war is on, but Sheen saw that. Communism was the enemy, was mm. the enemy of the church, and we needed to combat that enemy. And you know, so the holy face is there. It's very interesting that you bring up that those uh, elements of devotion to holy face, because immediately now I'm kind of making the connection because you think about communism and one, it wants to abolish Sunday. Many of the communists were inspired by the French revolutionaries who wanted to change the calendar, wanted to make the calendar different. And some even were talking about making eight day work days, work weeks, changing the way the seven day calendar structure and trying to abolish uh, having the day off on Sunday. And then you think about the the blasphemies and communism is a naturally atheist. And you can um, even quote Vladimir Lenin, who says atheism is the natural and inseparable part of communism. And so it makes sense that the holy face would be the devotion to combat uh, communism in our times and why Fulton Sheen seemed to have such a devotion to the holy face. So, Alan, the holy face devotion, how did you personally get in touch with this kind of devotion? Well, it was uh, back in 2019 and uh, COVID was starting to uh, uh, reach out over the world. The, um, you know, again, the governments were locking us down. Uh, the churches were being closed. And uh, I was starting to say, Lord, what do you want me to do? And I always realized that the interior life is the key to spend time in prayer. And yet, um, I think every Catholic has pictures of the holy face throughout their home be it the Shroud of Turin or the Veil of Veronica. And uh, again, as the faces were being covered up by mask, as with the faces were being, they were disappearing because we're all locked down, uh, the Lord wanted to show us his face. And so I started to find that this devotion was speaking not just to me, but to so many others who were locked down, who were in their homes. Um, again, why faces were being covered, the Lord was saying, Say to me, Lord, show us thy face, and we shall be saved. And I started to open up my Bible, and uh, of course, you realize that the word face is mentioned 840 times. Uh, the word countenance is mentioned 101 times in sacred scripture. So there's this great intimacy that uh, the Lord is saying, I want to show you my face, seek my face. And uh, then found the devotion to the Holy Face online. Uh, I enrolled in the Arch Confraternity of the Holy Face. And uh, again, just started this journey of um, being a devotee to the Holy Face. And a few years ago, I received a couple of relics of the Holy Face uh, that were commissioned by the Vatican. And so I've uh, been sharing those with uh, people at conferences and parish missions. But again, it was in COVID when we were covering our faces that the Lord showed us his face. Wow. Wow. Praise be to God, Alan. And, you know, we're running out of time, so I guess this will have to be a a longer conversation with you, Alan. We're going to have to talk about the Holy Face more. But one, let's start. Let's end with this. The Holy Face devotion has many people. OK, they may say, OK, is it just me looking at the face? What, what exactly is the devotion itself? Right. Well, the devotion begins with looking upon the face. Um, I think of the great story of St. Vincent de Paul, where he had a difficult child uh, that was giving everybody trouble. And he said, OK, I'll, I'll, I'll fix him. And he gave him a picture of the holy face. And he said, just look on the holy face every day, just for a moment or two. And each day, this troubled child looked upon the face. And on the 13th day, he came back to St. Vincent de Paul and said, I want you to hear my confession. I realize that our Lord loves me. I've caused him great grief. And I want to reconcile with him. So looking upon the face has a great uh, spiritual merit. Uh, I say to everybody, let's do this. And then there's the prayers of the litanies and the chaplet of the Holy Face. And we'll speak about that next time. But uh, start by looking upon the Lord um, and just uh, looking upon him. And you start to realize that your sin had caused him this grief. And it propels you into this life of making reparation 
and trying to do something for him out of love for him. So um, again, uh, that's kind of the nut, the nutshell. In a nutshell, uh, mm -hmm. the devotion's heart is looking upon the Lord and as, saying those prayers, Lord, show us thy face and we shall be saved and making a little bit of reparation. Every time you hear a blasphemy, um, say, blessed be the name of the Lord. Combat that blasphemy with uh, a, just a song of praise and adoration. Amen. Amen. Alan, we're at just about out of time. Where can people learn more about the Holy Face devotion? Yeah. So our website is holyfacemiracle.com. That's holyfacemiracle.com. We have a YouTube channel. I try to release something every week on the Holy Face. We pray the chaplet of the Holy Face together on the YouTube channel. But uh, the history is there, um, you know, just different devotions. Um, it's all there, holyfacemiracle.com. And Rudy likes that website a little bit better than some other ones. So now remember, that was holyfacemiracle.com. I repeat, holyfacemiracle.com. God love you, Alan. God bless you. And we'll see you next week.